Well, good afternoon. It is Tuesday, the 27th, or excuse me, it is Friday, the 27th of October. Forgot we changed our, our usual date. I'm here with uh, Michael Harding. Uh, Michael Elrith may be joining us here in a little bit. Uh, Michael's got his, uh, his uh, uh, appointment with the VA. Thank you for your service. Thank you for so, your Mr. Army <laughs> Army shirt on. That's right. And then, uh, so we're going to get going on the real estate report that he's got. Uh, so you want me to go ahead and share that? Yes, please. There, uh, Sergeant Major? <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> I'm just a, a lonely sergeant. Okay, well, I was just a lonely captain, so there you go. Well, there you go. <laughs> We're both leaders in our field, though. A absolutely. Yeah. So there was there was nothing really remarkable uh, this week, um, as as predicted. You know, we are getting towards the uh, uh, the end of October. Can you believe uh, Halloween is next week? Uh, what uh, are you going as? Huh? <laughs> Well, are you going to be oh, trick or treating? And what's your costume? Oh, no, no trick or treating for me. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll play the role of the grumpy old man saying, "Get off my lawn." I'm I'm pretty uh, good at that. <laughs> I, I I may go as a zombie stock. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> but um, the 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 activity has slowed down, and and that's not alarming, um, because we're we're headed to the cooler, wetter darker months you know pretty soon the uh the sunset will be before 6 p.m so it's it's that's that's it's typical so that's nothing uh of too too much concern uh in my opinion it just the the, the thing we have to monitor is to uh to see how much slowdown we have that's that's the thing that we need to monitor in the in the coming weeks and months um I do anticipate everything picking up once we hit uh, March. And I know that's several months away, but what I'm trying to say is that from from November, which is next week, through uh, through the, towards the end of February, we're going to have a pretty slow market, and there's really um, not much activity. The thing to keep an eye on, though, will be the uh, Chairman Powell, Fed Chairman Powell. Yes. What will he do with the interest rates? I did receive something uh, the other day from someone who's in the mortgage industry. The anticipation is by the end of the year, we should be somewhere around 7.2% interest for mortgage. Um, um, well, that is wonderful because they hit a peak today or yesterday. Um, yesterday, they were at 779 on the 30 year and 7.03 on the 15 year. Uh, uh, well, it gets even better. By the end of next year, the prediction is uh, that the mortgages will be around 6.2. Uh, next year. Okay. Well, that that's helpful. I mean, that's uh, certainly um, some concerns out there. Uh, here's, here's the plot on, uh, on mortgage rates. You know, I'm going to throw this on top of you. Pardon yes, me. Please. Uh, but you can see that you know they've had quite the quite the move up. Uh, so here at seven point seven nine, and you said you you thought by the end of twenty twenty four they were going to be six ish down here. Yep, yep, six point two. Six point two. Okay, so right right about there. I mean, which is still historically low, but you know for everybody who's patting themselves on the back for getting a mortgage at uh, you know two point one percent, you know in July of twenty twenty one. That's still kind of a big move. Yeah, and and you know, Bill, what I what I if I remember, uh, what I'll do is I'll take take a look at at the uh, the average purchase price for July of twenty twenty one, and compare it to the the price for what month are we in? We'll be in. Uh, I don't know if October's numbers will be out before we meet again. But I'll take a look at September's numbers and, and see where we are in terms of uh, house valuation. Because um, if you bought a house, like just say 400000 last year at, at two and a quarter, two and a half percent, you've gained all that equity and you have that low monthly payment. Um, so I, I just I just don't foresee 
there's going to be a lot of activity in which someone's going to be willing to um to give up that that stake and that equity. So what they'll do is they'll use that equity to uh, apply it towards home improvements and things of that nature, so that uh, they can they can modify their house keep the low monthly payment and still have a, a nice place to live. So that's what I foresee happening. And that's why uh, the number that's of, of great interest to me is the new to market because without the new inventory, there's not going to be anything to sell. Um, yeah. You're only uh, get rid of that guy. Okay. Sorry. You can see we're trying to get other stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. God, I hate this. Come on, get your. Other so what's stuff. new in the world of stocks? What's that? What's new in the world of stocks? Not much. Uh, I was just pulling the stuff here. Obviously, we're not quite to the close, um, but um, the uh, for the week, the Dow at twelve thirty was off two point three three percent. The Nasdaq was off two point seven seven percent, and the S and P five hundred was down two point seven percent. Uh, so, you know, kind of a bad week. The good news is um, the 30-year Treasury had dropped six basis points to 5.023, which, again, is not great. Uh, and the 10-year was down 7.9 basis points to 4.845. Um, so, uh, and um, Bill Ackerson, who's a very famous uh, hedge fund manager, had a massive short on um, United States Treasuries. And uh, about two days ago, three days ago, he said uh, he's covered his short. Um, so hopefully that means that um, the, um, you know, the treasuries will move back up in value, uh, which means the rates will move down. Uh, so we'll see what uh, what's if that comes to fruition. Oh, um, I'm sorry to switch back, but one thing that I wanted to point out is that uh, if you were to slide over to the to, to what appears to be the right, uh, you'll see that the average sold price is greater than the average list price. It's only a couple of hundred dollars, but it's a move in the right direction as opposed to being inverted. Uh, if you take a look at uh, two weeks ago, the uh, average uh, list price was, let's do some creative rounding to say 5,000 higher than the average sold price. Yeah. One more week up. So, so excuse me, that's, that's encouraging. And uh, the list price per square foot and the uh, list price per sold foot, they're the same. So they're just probably some rounding. It could be a, a wider spread, but just with the rounding, it, it appears to be uh, the numbers that's on display. But uh, that's encouraging to me because then it means that the, we're, the, the market is, is healthy. Uh, the thing that I will be uh, interested in seeing when the, uh, the report comes out from the RMLS, the Reasonable, Regional Multiple Listing Service, is the inventory um, that they that they that they get the inventory numbers that they put out? I should say uh, that's going to be interesting to take a look at because that's going to give us a, a really good indication as to how well the market is behaving uh, based on um, inventory. If we have a, a, a steady increase in inventory, the prices should come down. But if we stay around the two months. Of inventory, that's still a, a a seller's market, and that'll bode well for those uh, watching their equity position and wanting it to grow a little bit more. Uh, very interesting. Uh, do you got time to talk about the um, uh, NAR National Association of Realtors? I guess there's a couple of court cases working their way through about um, uh, realtor commissions. Uh, I think in Ohio. Um, any update yeah. on that? Well, I don't. I don't remember the state, but that is that is always the issue, and um, I, I don't remember all the particulars. But uh, broker commission is something that's always a, a topic of discussion because, um, you know, folks believe that realtors are paid too much, and so, and and then realtors are are complained about how little they're paid by other realtors. It's, it's a whole convoluted uh, discussion that um, unfortunately I don't have time for because I have to run off to an appointment. 
Okay. Well, th that's great. Uh, go ahead and sign off and uh, appreciate your your uh, insight on the real estate. The real estate. And thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for your service and thank you for uh, for hosting this event every week. And be be healthy. That's the main thing. Yes. Number one rule for us all. Be healthy. I, I, can't, I can't. I can't do the the Spock thing all that well. Uh, uh. Just like an old horse, don't go lame. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Get shot. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> you guys take care. I gotta run. Okay. Okay, Mike Lilrath. So we had the, had the uh, gave the uh, figures on the week here, and Michael Harding gave us his update uh, on the real estate, and he had to run off to a VA appointment. Uh, so what's happening down there in sunny Arizona? Oh, things are fine. Happy Friday. I know it's not happy everywhere, but uh, it's uh, things in Arizona are fine. It's cooled off a little bit and uh, makes uh, life better than last week's 100-degree uh, days. And uh, in my unit, we got a new air conditioner in yesterday, so after a few days of suffering wow. in a mild sort of a way. Um, so anyway, all is good, all is good. Well, hey, I got some uh, some good news here for for parents who would like to steer their uh, studious children into a career that will would pay well and will stay in high demand, and that's uh, pharmacy pharmacist. If your child likes to study math, biology, chemistry, is responsible and detail oriented, pharmacy uh, is a great field. There's a shortage of pharmacists, and there are some problems at some of the regional, I mean, excuse me, national pharmacies that the pharmacists are often now claiming that they're uh, overworked and uh, they're unhappy about it. Um, so the first part of that's good news, I guess. <laughs> Send your child to a college where they can become a pharmacist. I don't know how you engineer your <laughs> child's direction very frequently, but it's always worth a try. Um, so on the on the staying in the healthcare industry, there was a study by the Commonwealth Fund. It's a private foundation, and it focuses on equitable access to healthcare. So maybe they got a a, a dog in the fight that skews things a little bit, but. On the other hand, I think they're they're seeing increased demand um, for assistance from people that can't pay their their med medically related bills. And uh, the survey that was done recently indicated that almost forty percent of the surveyed delayed or skipped health care because they couldn't afford it. Uh, much of that is in prescription drugs. Um, they say their health is worsened as a result of not being able to pay for health care. Uh, about one third of, of past due medical accounts have been assigned to uh, collection agencies. On the good news side of things, I suppose they Biden administration has proposed rules uh, barring unpaid medical debt from appearing on credit reports. Hmm. And those that are paying their bills um, that are struggling, 39% say they've cut back on food, heat, or found a cheaper place to rent. A quarter of those took another job to work more hours in addition to their existing uh, job. So Americans need help here at home. Um, I have a, another study here that suggests the diet is good for the earth and good for you. I almost hate it, to ask. This, uh, <laughs> yeah, this appeared in a, in a peer-reviewed British journal, Nature Food. Oh, and no. it was supported studies from Tulane University and the Harvard University 
Chan School of Public Health. So the uh, our our uh, food consumption um, uh, habits worldwide account for about 20% of greenhouse gases emissions. So by reducing consumption of some food items, we could actually have a, an impact on the uh, greenhouse emissions. Um, the, the, the big area has, has been hammered on pretty hard in the past bill and that's replacing beef with uh, poultry or vegetarian items um, and other options include replacing juice which is processed and contributes to the carbon footprint replacing juice with whole fruit and replace replacing dairy with uh, non-dairy milks or almond milk now i did this because i wanted more protein and uh um, an easy uh, breakfast food. I, for a couple of months, I've been consuming this uh, 20%, um, uh, not 20, 20 gram uh, plant protein, um, superfood protein shake. And I like it. And it seems to fill me a little bit. And it um, seems to reduce my uh, appetite a little bit. So maybe there's something in this for all of us, but I'm not, these studies are um, so complete that we can stop paying attention. Um, who's got a dog in the fight again? Well, Mike, there's only one issue with that. And, and of course that's, uh, what would you rather cut into a nice juicy steak or a nice uh, juicy chicken? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it seems like I had a nice juicy steak recently, um, and I'm going to have another one soon. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> and I and you know you can't just diss the beef producers and the dairy men. You know that's right. They're they, they're vital and and they have uh, put a lot of effort into uh, sustaining us uh, throughout this country. You know, there's dairy farms in many states or or next door to all states, and uh, you know, I when I go by those uh, those dairy farms, I I think about what what I know about them. I spend about a week on a on a dairy farm, um, doing a construction project, and uh, we slept at the dairy farm and spent. We ate meals with the dairy farmer, and uh, uh, you know, watched the Olympics with them. I think uh, you know uh, uh, when that was on. You know, when I was working out there years and years and years ago. Well, anyway, you know, the cows have to be milked twice a day. Now, somebody has to be responsible to get them in to feed them and milk them. And, and uh, you know, they can't, they can't do it just once, once a day. They have to do it twice a day. So it's an intensive business. And if I saw a dairy farmer that was going out of business, I would generally feel really bad for them because I know they, they, they work hard 365 days a year. Uh, well, having said that, um, I will share one thing real quick, if I can get it to come up. There we go. And that is share screen. And in terms of your reference to cows, don't forget they are the foster mothers of the human race. There we go. Foster mothers of the human race. There. Foster mothers of the human race. There you go. Yes. And I guess the you know maybe the the stake is foster fathers. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Very interesting, right. Mike. And then back to chickens. There's foster farms for chickens. You know. <laughs> yes, they are the foster farms of the human race. That's right. <laughs> Don't forget the chickens. <laughs> they, will chicken. come, they will come home to roost. That's right. <laughs> okay, that's hey, all I got here. You, uh, 
put a real quick. Did you talk about interest rates today? Uh, yes. 